This is Bloomberg Markets. I'm Scarlett Phil. And I'm Julia Chasley. Some of the president's closest confidants are said to be urging him to pardon Michael Milken, the 1980s junk bond king. Milken has sought for decades to reverse his securities fraud conviction due in part to his philanthropic works. Let's get to the nuts and bolts of this story with Bloomberg's Greg Farrell. He's also joined on the phone by wealth management executive David Bonson. He sent a plea to President Trump to pardon Milken. Of course, we've spoken to David in the past about this in particular. I'll start with you, though, first here in the, in the studio. There's some pretty close confidants, and we've used that term, and they are close. I mean, we're talking Steve Mnuchin, and perhaps an unsur- a very surprising one is there Rudy Giuliani as well pushing here. Uh, yes, and um, this, there's a lot of wind behind the sails in this particular effort. Uh, Mr. Milken has wanted this for a long time, mm. for, since the 1990s, and now is a constellation of you know, stars in his favor. Not only is President Trump obviously far more open to granting pardons, but you have not just Rudy Giuliani, the prosecutor who initiated the yes. criminal case against um, Michael Milken, but you also have Anthony Scaramucci, who is very close ties to the White House. You have um, Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary and former Goldman Sachs banker, and um, uh, in who spoke at uh, Milken's most recent Davos of the West conference earlier this year. And also we have uh, Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law. Rudy has been on the record before. He wrote a letter during the Obama administration in support of this. Mm. And going back to the year 2000, he supported uh, an effort to get President Bill Clinton to pardon Michael Milken. But it's been politically unpalatable. Uh, Milken has become such a symbol um, uh, for you know greed on Wall Street in the 1980s that it's not just about him anymore. It's about right. what he's. It's a bigger theme. Well, let's bring in David Bonson to this conversation because David, you've been on the record as also supporting uh, a pardon for Michael Milken. Why is the time right now? Well, I think that the uh, pragmatic issue is just simply that clearly uh, the president right now seems to be in a streak of granting different pardons. As far as for Mr. Milken in particular, the genesis of my request to the president a year ago or nearly a year ago at this time was, if you recall, Tesla issuing high yield bonds. And my belief that the entire premise of the Milken prosecution of the late 80s and the public uproar around him was that this junk bond craze was an invalid aspect of capital markets rooted in greed. And then over 30 years, we not only had the validation of the asset class, but now we had this uh, ever so pop, popular pop culture friendly company like Tesla actually utilizing the very vehicle that Milton himself had had popularized. Um, as far as the training for the president, I, I believe that uh, he'll have to figure that out. The White House counsel has written me to suggest that um, these things will play out in a given timeline. Uh, and I don't think this falls into the same category um, as some of the other pardons he's granted in recent weeks. But as far as the principle behind it, I think it represents an incredible opportunity for the president to write what was an incredible prosecutorial wrong. So what you're saying is that Michael Milken added value to the economy because he created this form of financing for companies that couldn't have gotten it otherwise, companies that are adding to uh, the America's capabilities. However, Michael Milken himself has wanted to reverse his securities fraud conviction. A pardon would not get him there, would it? Um, no, it would not in and of itself. I have never heard, by the way, that Mr. Milken has requested that at the FTC. That would be new information to me. Right. But you're certainly correct that in and of itself, the criminality at the federal court level being pardoned for his side uh, with the FTC. I'd be very surprised if Mr. Milken would be interested in that at this point in his career, 30 years removed from the securities industry. Greg? Yes. Well, I wouldn't be too surprised about that. First of all, if there is a presidential pardon, David is correct. Um, that would not lift the SEC, the lifetime ban on Michael Milken running other people's money. Um, and I don't know Mr. Milken at all, but a guy who was that good at it 70, several decades ago, I would think, uh, would want to get back in the game if only running his family money or something like that. I do want to contest one or a slight point that David made, and that is um, the conviction back in 1990. Um, Milken pleaded guilty to six counts. If this is not someone who was forced on him, he could have, and he had the resources to fight these uh, and contest these charges in court. And he decided not to. So 
Um, I do agree with David that there was, there a, a, if not a hysteria, a real appetite in the public, you know, an appetite for scalps following uh, what happened in the 1980s. However, that doesn't mean that every conviction that came about was either wrong-headed or misguided. And finally, he's right about junk bonds. They remain a, an extremely useful tool mm -hmm. in finance, and Milken deserves all the credit for that. David, you pointed out in your, your comment there that this would be a very different pardon from some of those that the president's already talked about or having already done so far. Do, do you think that in some way downgrades the, the relevance of being pardoned at this stage when it's in combination with names such as Martha Stewart, for example, being thrown out there and some of the other names oh, that, are being, yeah, that, are be, that are being talked about? Do you worry about that? Um, I don't, but I, I have to say that my behind this has never been the political benefit to the president around it. I think that with Dinesh D'Souza, that it was clearly a, an overreach, and the president benefited politically from that as far as with his own base. Um, I think what Martha, you could argue that it also represented a pretty egregious prosecutorial overreach. But I do have to push back on something that he said regarding the Milken deal. Yes, he pled guilty, but he pled guilty with a gun to his brother's head. They, they were literally threatening his brother with lifetime prosecution for things his brother did not do. And Milken... I hear you. I hear you, David. But his brother would also get his day in court. That's what. That's why they have courtrooms. Yeah. That's why they have juries yeah. and a you know, no, no, jury no, no. peers. In a, per, in a perfect world, in a perfect world, I agree with you. But in, in the real world, obviously, people take pleas for things they don't believe they're guilty of all the time. And the people that I have learned this from are the prosecutors who brought this case. Rudy Giuliani and John Carroll. Carroll himself, the lead prosecutor, said we criminalized technical infractions. Those were their words. Yeah. And I think Milken deserves history to remember him differently. And you will have to assume that the president will uh, take this into consideration yes. if indeed he does look at this. David, great to chat to you. Thank you so much for that. Certainly if you consider the kinds of people in his administration who are pushing for it as well. Those are, you know, Jared Kushner, for instance, is not someone you ignore if you're President Trump. All right. Thank you so much as well to Greg Farrell.